Hello, my name is Joshua Beard. And I'm Shaylin Dibbins. And this is our project for the 2016 Amalthea REU program. For this video, we will be discussing learning the unheard, identifying infrasound events. You may be wondering, what is infrasound and why are we studying it? Infrasound consists of low frequency acoustic signals, typically those less than 20 Hz, which is below that of the human threshold for hearing. Common sources of infrasound include seismic and volcanic activity and man-made events such as explosions. Our motivations are to enable us to identify nuclear explosions, predict seismic activity, and map volcanic plumes. Classifying infrasound usually involves three steps, pre-processing, feature extraction, and classification. The first step, pre-processing, is where we isolate the event in time, normalize the data, and filter out any high-frequency noise. Then, feature extraction is performed to extract the pertinent information about the signals that can be used for feature vectors later. We chose to implement two different feature extraction techniques. The first technique implemented was MELM frequency capture coefficients. Given a signal, it is divided into a number of overlapping frames. Then a series of mathematical transforms are used to obtain the spectrum. Given a pre-calculated filter bank, the filtered spectrum of the signal is computed, and then the energy captured by each filter is obtained. After a few more mathematical transforms, the mean of the values is taken and is used to represent a feature in the final feature vector. The second technique implemented was the Hilbert-Huang transform. Given a signal, it is decomposed into a number of additive components called intrinsic mode functions, or IMFs. We then use the Hilbert transform to calculate the instantaneous frequency vectors for each signal. The covariance among these frequencies is then calculated and the Cholesky decomposition is used to create the final feature vector. The final step is classification. Given the feature vectors obtained from nine different classes, we used three different classification techniques. Fisher's linear discriminant, support vector machine, and k-nearest neighbor. As shown here by this bar graph, the final classification results show that HHT feature vectors performed poorly when compared to the results from MFCC feature vectors for all three classification methods. Given our results, we recommend using MEL frequency capture coefficients and a support vector machine or KNN for classifying infrasonic signals. Once again, my name is Joshua Beard, and I'm Shaylin Divins, and we would like to thank you for your time.